five meditations where you come back to another video. In the first episode of the series on sets of numbers, we have talked about what sets of numbers there actually are. And we started with kind of motivating the natural numbers and natural numbers with zero a tiny little bit. Today we would like to talk about the rules and uh, operations you could have in the natural numbers overall. It's going to be an important video. It's going to um, be important for later topics, basically for everything. So, so if you know some of these rules really well, then you are well prepared for all of the school mathematics, okay? Some of those rules are all you really need for some parts of school mathematics. So we are going to dive right in. At first, I would like to introduce the notion of addition to you guys. The addition is, well, the plus operation in the natural numbers. Addition is defined as follows, it's going to be denoted by a plus and it has the property that you just add one natural number to another natural number, meaning if I have five apples and I'm adding three apples to it, I'm going to get eight apples overall. Meaning as an example, we can say five plus three is going to give us eight. It's as easy as it is. This is the addition in the natural numbers and you might see something. We took one natural number, for example, 5 comes after 4, okay, it's a successor, that's what you call it. And then you added 3 to it, okay, it's also in here. And then, after adding those two together, you are going to land somewhere here at the number 8. Meaning, we took two natural numbers and the output was yet another natural number. This is what you would call closure under it addition. So, the operation is closed, meaning we take something out of the set and we are going to land in the set yet again after doing the operation. The same thing holds for the so-called multiplication. Ooh, that sounds mysterious. <laughs> multiplication is usually being denoted by a little dot. Or, if you prefer, American boy, US boy out there with a times thing. Okay, with a little cross. Do not mistake it for an X. It's, it's not an X. It's a cross. Now, multiplication is just an easier way to write addition, basically. So multiplication is, for example, if I have two times three apples, I'm going to get six apples out of it. Okay? As an example, we are going to take two times three apples, and this is going to give us six. Okay, three and three is going to give us six. Meaning you could write it out using addition. Multiplication is just a nicer way to rewrite this operation here, because this can get quite messy, so we are using multiplication to make it easier for us. You can interpret this as just 2 times 3 added to itself. Okay, 3 plus 3. Or you can interpret it the other way around. Okay, this is what you call commutativity. We are going to talk about this later. This is just the number 2 added to itself 3 times. So 2 plus 2 plus 2. So we were tracing some stuff back, and it makes perfect sense, okay? if you just talk about it using natural numbers. Okay. Later it's maybe going to make less sense because, well, real numbers and shit. But this doesn't matter now. We are natural numbers. This multiplication, this is addition. And for each operation there usually exists kind of an inverse operation. Something you can do with addition to reverse it basically, to get back to where you were at the beginning. For example, subtraction. 5 is nothing but 8 minus 3, for example. But you need to be careful. Subtraction and also division is only partially defined in the natural numbers because it could happen that you subtract um, 3 from 2. Okay, 2 minus 3. If you had 2 apples and I'm taking 3 away, you are going to get negative 1 apple. Okay, we had talked about this before, that you are, you are actually... Uh, you actually need to give me an apple back, okay? If I take three apples from you, something like this, then um, it's not in natural numbers anymore. Also not in natural numbers with zero. So you need to be really careful. There's another rule for that. We are going to talk about this in a minute. But for now, subtraction is partially defined in natural numbers. You can only really use it, and we are going to denote it by this negative sign, okay? It's just a plus with one line less. <laughs> we have talked about this before on the integers, on the whole numbers. 
this thing is being defined by taking away things from an original number, okay, just like apples. Meaning overall, we could take as an example 8 minus 3 is nothing but 5. But here's one thing, we need closure under addition yet again, kind of. It doesn't work for the whole set. So if you want to use subtraction, we need to land back at the natural numbers. So you can subtract 9 from 8, it doesn't work, because then it wouldn't be in the natural numbers anymore. Same thing with division. Division is usually being denoted by this cringy double dot. Do not use this notation. I do not know why anyone teaches people this notation. It sucks really hard. You should not use this. It's only there for generating viral math problems on Facebook and Twitter. Do not use it. The more fancy way to use something like this is the notation that we find in rational numbers, namely with this little line, and if you take a look at the calculator, you might find this symbol. And as a little fun fact, those two dots are actually there to replace numbers. For, for example, 3 over 2. Okay, just as a little side note, in, in case you were ever wondering where this symbol came from. Speaking of 3 divided by 2, or 2 divided by 3, whatsoever, it's not a natural number. We are running into problems here. 3 over 2 is 1.5. It's not in the set. Meaning, we can't use this kind of division there. But what we could, for example, do is we could take 4 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is nothing but 2 times 2 over 2. And now we can cancel the factor. We are going to get 2 over 1, landing us at exactly 2. So division does work in a way. In the natural numbers, the only thing that we really need to take care of is that factors do cancel in the numerator and denominator such that our denominator is going to be 1 after the cancellation. Then it's valid in natural numbers. Since this is kind of um, weird, this is really weird, so defining those two operations like this, mathematicians came up with something that actually holds in all of the natural numbers. They are called the cancellation rules. Maybe you have heard of them before. Hello, Katie Kellys. Nice to have you here. The cancellation rules just tell you that you can cancel common factors out on both sides. As a little example, here are the two cancellation rules that hold in the natural numbers, in all of the natural numbers. Okay, 5, I hope you agree with, agree with me, is nothing but 4 plus 1. But 5 is also 3 plus 2, which is 3 plus 1 plus 1. I hope you agree with me. Now take a look at this equation here. We have 1 as a common factor here and your teacher would say, well, maybe it's subtract 1 on both sides and then you are fine, okay? Basically you can do so because you are still going to be in the natural numbers, okay, per this definition. But we can also make use of the cancellation rule that holds the natural numbers, meaning we are just going to cancel out the 1 and then 4 is equal to 3 plus 1. That makes sense, okay? So we are good. That's the cancellation rule for the addition, but there's also one for the multiplication and it goes by the same means basically. Here's an example that I came up with um, <laughs> in the German version of this video. For example, 6 times 2 is 12, but 6 can also be expressed as 3 times 2, and then times 2. Meaning, we have 2 as a common factor here, we can cancel it out. This is just the same argument that we were using before. We had common factors in the numerator and denominator that would cancel out to a 1 completely. 6 is 3 times 2. Works out wonders. Now we have talked about the basic operations that you find in natural numbers. If you can deal with those, then, then you are well settled for all the other numbers that we are going to discuss later. And now for some rules. In the last part of this video, we would like to talk about the most important rules that hold in the natural numbers as well as the ordering in the natural numbers and how to deal with this thing right here. Number zero, okay, it's a bit weird, has a few special rules. We are going to dive right in. Now, there are some rules that you might know of that hold in all of the natural numbers. One of those being the associativity. Really important rule and it becomes even more important if you want to deal with the integers, especially the negative integers, because there, if you understand associativity, you're already settled to understand how to multiply negative numbers together, for example. Then, so this is a really important fact you should keep in mind. Now, associativity, we are going to do this with numbers yet again, and it holds for multiplication 
and addition. If we have five apples and we are going to add three plus two apples to it, okay, just, just keep this in mind, we are going to add three and two apples together and then we are going to add five apples to what we had here in parentheses. This is going to make ten apples. But it really doesn't matter if we add three plus two apples to five apples or if we first take five plus three apples makes eight and then add two apples to it makes ten yet again. So it really doesn't matter. This is what associativity is all about. Meaning we can also do this five plus three plus two it's going to hold in the natural. Makes perfect sense, right? Both, just the value 8 to 10, is just a different order. Do the parentheses at first and then solve all the other stuff. Now, same thing holds for multiplication. What we can do, we can at first multiply 3 and 2 together and then multiply the 5 with the 3 and the 2. Really doesn't matter. This makes 6. 6 times 5 makes 13. Now, it's also the same on this side. We can at first multiply 5 and 3 together, 5 times 3, and then multiply solving by 2. 15 times 2 makes 13 yet again. I hope it makes sense to you. It's, it's, it's really easy, but it's also really important because if you can deal with this, and you can also later, together with distributivity, deal with the binomial formula, for example. Associativity just tells you that you can place parentheses however you wish. Okay? Now, we are going to go for the commutativity. Commutativity just tells you that it really doesn't matter how you execute an operation. So if I give you three apples and then also five apples, makes eight apples, it's the same as giving you five apples and then three apples. Also holds for multiplication and addition yet again. So five plus three is pretty much the same as three plus five, okay? It really doesn't matter what I do first, if I give you 5 apples and then 3, or at first 3 apples and then 5. Now same thing, what's for multiplication, okay? 5 times 3 is the same as 3 times 5, both value 8 to 15. And if you know this, you are also one step closer to, for example, um, deriving for yourself how the binomial formulas really work. That's the commutativity, but there's also the distributivity. It works from both sides. Distributivity just combines both operations that we have here and just tell you that you can basically multiply stuff out or factor stuff out in some way. Those are the two things you can basically do in all the number ranges that we have covered. Naturals, positive, negative, integers, blah, blah, blah. Distributivity, let's do this with numbers yet again, just tells you that we can multiply 5 by 3 plus 2 and then we are going to end up with something. What is the something? Distributivity says that we can take this multiplication thing, this 5, and multiply it to each and every factor. This is distributivity. 5 times 3 plus 5 times 2. I hope this does make sense to you. I mean, 3 plus 2, if we were to go by our associativity rules, okay, by the parentheses, 3 plus 2 makes 5, and 5 times 5 is nothing but 25. 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 2 is 10, 15 plus 10 is 25, does work out. And the same thing actually holds if we were to bring this 5 to this side with the multiplication symbol. Just because in the natural numbers everything is commutative. Okay, So we are combining this distributivity with the commutativity to end up with the right distributive law. This was the left one because we multiplied from the left and now for the right distributive law also have 3 plus 2 times 5. And you might have guessed you're going to take the 5 and multiply it to here. So this is 3 times 5 plus and now 5 times 2 or 2 times 5. It really doesn't matter. Those two are going to vary to the same just because multiplication and addition is actually commutative. Just turn those around and really nothing would change. So if you know about those three basic rules, you are already done with so much of all the high school mathematics that you are ever going to cover because so much algebra is just based on those simple rules and if you know how to use them you're a pretty powerful boy already in the school game, okay? Just saying. Now we are going to talk about the order in the natural numbers and after that the zero and then we are done. All in the natural numbers just tells you that you can basically compare sizes of elements in here. I mean, if I have three apples 
And let's say Tom. <laughs> who is Tom? I don't know. I don't care who Tom is. Is he male or female? I don't care about genders. Could be a female, never mind. Or an Apache helicopter. If he has five apples, then obviously Tom has five or two more apples than you do. So, so he has five apples, you have three, meaning Tom has more apples than you do. We can put this into the notation that five is strictly greater than three. Or you can turn it around and say that three is strictly less than five. Does make sense. And the motivation here is what I just said. We can compare sizes of numbers by doing this. Five is... 3 plus 2, meaning if we have to add some quantity to a number to get some other out, then we know that 5 is going to be greater than 3. Okay, this is just how this whole system works. There's also another situation, if we were to add 0 to here, this just means that a number could be greater or equal to some other number. So I hope you agree with me that 5 is greater or equal to 5. I mean, 5 is obviously not greater than 5. Doesn't make any sense, because we don't need to add any other quantity to 5 to get 5. But it's certainly equal to 5, because 5 is equal to 5. I hope you understand this. That's a different notation. You might use it in the school context sometimes, but most of the time you're probably going to deal with this relationship here. It tells you about the order of the natural numbers. Just ordering for certain sizes. And now for the zero. Zero is a number that causes a lot of problems, namely when you do division or if you raise something to the zero of power, for example. But zero has some nice properties, namely that it doesn't change the quantity if you add zero to something. So if you have three apples and I don't give you any other apple, you are going to have three apples. But also zero has the power to eliminate things, because if you don't have any apple, then you don't have any apple. If you don't have three apples, okay, if you have zero times three apples, well, then you don't have any apples, you have zero apples. And this is the power of zero, destruction and indifference, okay? <laughs> Those are not the correct mathematical terms, just that you know what I'm talking about, okay? Add zero to something, doesn't change anything, multiply zero by something, destroys everything. And this is it. Those are the most basic and most important rules in the natural numbers. That was a longer video just because the next videos are going to be way shorter, just because we can use all those rules and also the positive and negative integers, in the rationals, in the reals, etc. And I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe to this channel and also to the main channel, Flamble Maths, if you are into a bit of higher mathematics or just like the sense of humor in those videos. I don't really know. And you can support the channel on Patreon or you can buy those t-shirts I create. And up until the next video, I'm wishing you guys a flamble day. Ciao!